Hello students, today we are going to discuss the topics types of RNA's genetic code, translation and regulation of gene expression. Now let us discuss the different types of RNA's found in a cell. The first type is mRNA that is called messenger RNA. This is 5 percent of the total RNA. It carries messages from DNA about the sequence of amino acids to be joined to form polypeptides. It is also called template RNA. It is linear in shape and it is longest of all the three. Let us have a look into the mRNA. So, you can see here the RNA single stranded with codon 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. This represents a triplet codons. The next type of RNA is tRNA, generally called transfer RNA. As the name indicates, it transfer amino acids to ribosomes during polypeptide formation. It could read the genetic code. It makes 15 percent of the total RNA and it is the smallest of all types. Let us have a look into the picture of tRNA. Now this is a very famous structure which was proposed by R. W. Hawley in 1965. It is commonly called clover model which result from self folding and base pairing. It is also called a doctor molecule because it can adopt the amino acid from the cytoplasm and transfer it to the messenger RNA. As you can see from the following picture, the three important loops are there. The one which is at the bottom, it is called the anticodon arm or the anticodon loop. And the one on the top, there is a site for amino acid binding site. So, on the basis of anticodon that it code on the mRNA, it could select the amino acid from the cytoplasm. So, each amino acid have a specific tRNA. The next important RNA is rRNA that is called ribosomal RNA. This is highly coiled. It forms small and large subunit of ribosomes and it makes the 80 percent of total RNA. The picture clearly shows a small subunit and the large subunit. So, let us quickly revise the four different type of RNA that is transcribed from DNA. Besides messenger DNA, ribosomal and transfer RNA, we have another one the primase which you have studied in DNA replication. The primer RNA which is used to initiate DNA replication, the messenger RNA which is used to carry the instructions about polypeptide structure to the site of translation. Ribosomal RNA, part of the ribosome which is used in the construction of polypeptides and the transfer RNA that carry amino acids to the site of translation. Now, let us study about the genetic code. Let us go back to the central dogma where it states that DNA forms RNA and RNA forms protein. From DNA to RNA, we have just studied the transcription process and from RNA to protein, it is called translation. So, that means if there is a change in the DNA or RNA, there will be a change in the amino acid in proteins. So, now let us try to define what is a genetic code. It is the information in the form of sequence of bases in DNA strands and the order of bases in messenger RNA decides the order of amino acids in polypeptides. So, the central dogma of the biology says that the DNA replicates by the process of replication and after that the DNA forms the RNA that is a transcription of genes and then the RNA forms a protein which is called the translation of messenger RNA. And we can well see in the picture the different amino acids which are used during the process. Now, in genetic code we use the term codons. Now, the picture gives a dictionary of the genetic code where you have a first letter, second letter and a third letter. These three letter combines and forms three codons. Uh, this was given by Gemau. Now, we know there are four bases, the two purines and two pyrimidines in DNA and RNA. There are 20 amino acids. 
So, by permutation and combination process we found that there, there are 64 codons and each codon is a triplet. That means, it is signified by 3 base pairs, 3 bases. For example, let us see triple U. This code for the amino acid phenylalanine. So, always we find the codon is a triplet. Now, if you can guess what the picture shows. The first picture was Nirenberg and the second picture is Hargobin Khurana. They were the first one to deciphering the genetic code and that was poly U that represents the codon and the translation which translated to the amino acid polyphenylalanine. Now, let us see the salient features of the genetic code. The first important feature is it is triplet. Triplet that means it is made up of three bases. For example, CCU, AUG, CAU and CGU and it is read in this way only. There are 61 codons and there are three stop codons. So, total we have 64 codons and the stop codons are UAA, UAG and UGA. Another very important feature is this is universal and there are no punctuations in the genetic code. There is no commas. Another important feature is that the genetic code is specific whether it is a bacteria or it is a human being. The three bases they code for the same amino acid. So, it is very very specific and second important property is degenerate. That means, one amino acid can be coded by more than one codon. So, what is the role of genetic code? As you can clearly see in the picture, we read the three bases like ATG, CTA or GTC and each of these three bases they code for a particular amino acid. So, what is the role of the genetic code is to code for the amino acid. So, now we have a concept how we go from gene to protein. So, this particular diagram shows that how does a cell make a protein. So, all you have studied now from replication to transcription to translation that the DNA forms the RNA with the help of RNA polymerase then ultimately it forms a protein with the amino acids as the building block. Now, there is a simple question for you that find out the number of amino acid from the following mRNA. A template has been given to you which read as AUG, UUC, GAU, GGU, GGC and UAA having the polarity 5 prime to 3 prime. You have to find out the number of amino acids. Now, let me give you some hint to solve the problem. You first make a triplet and you be aware of the stop codons and find out the number of amino acids. So, now let us have the summary of the topics. The region that is transcribed in transcriptional unit is called structural genes. The largest amount of RNA is ribosomal RNA. The adapter molecule is transfer RNA and genetic code is universal. Now, let us have a small quiz for you. Define transcription. What are the three types of RNAs? State the role of promoter gene. What are exons and introns? What is the DNA strand that transcribe called? And name the enzyme that catalyzes formation of RNA nucleotides. Till now, you have studied about the transcription that how DNA forms RNA and the different type of RNAs that are involved in the transcription process. Today, we are going to discuss that how the RNA forms protein that is the translation process and where the gene is and how the gene is regulated. So, now let us have an overview of translation process. We are going to study about the meaning, the materials required for the translation process the process that requires the following steps, activation of amino acid, charging of tRNA, initiation of polypeptide chain, elongation and finally, termination. Now, before we go into the detail of translation process, let us see where does it take place. 
Now, you have already studied that the transcription, it takes place inside the nucleus. The RNA processing takes place and that the protein formation that is the translation process, it takes place in the cytoplasm. That means, the mRNA is transferred from nucleus to cytoplasm. So, the materials which are required for translation process are number 1 amino acids, which are the building blocks of the protein, DNA, RNAs, ribosomes and the various enzymes. Now, you can see the picture, the picture of a ribosome having the small subunit and the large subunit. The amino acids and the mRNA on which the protein synthesis will take place. Now, let us have a look into the binding sites of ribosomes. So, as you can see in the picture, there are two important sites of the ribosome. One is called the A site and the other one is called the P site. The A site is the amino acid binding site and P is called the peptidyl site. Now, let us study the steps of translation. The first step is activation of amino acid. The amino acids are activated by reacting with ATP. The source of energy here is ATP and that is how it forms amino acid AMP. In step 2, charging of tRNA that is transfer RNA takes place. The charging takes place when the transfer RNA it reacts with the ATP and it gets charged. The amino acids are bind to the tRNA. The amino acids which are already activated by ATP, they bind to the tRNA and that is how the tRNA are charged. In the step 3, there is a formation of translation initiation complex that is the mRNA plus tRNA plus amino acid plus the two subunit of the ribosomes. That forms the translation initiation complex. As you can clearly see in the picture, the small subunit and the large subunit of the ribosomes with the mRNA and the initiating codon AUG with the tRNA having the anticodon UAC and the initiating amino acid that is methionine. Now, let us see the step 4 that is the elongation of polypeptide chain. During elongation process, the amino acids are added one by one. Elongation factors are needed. Charged tRNA enter A site that is amino acid site. There is peptide bond formation which is catalyzed by the enzyme peptidyl transferase. Translocation that is shifting of tRNA from A site to P site takes place. The source of energy is GTP. Now, let us see that with the help of the following diagram, how the elongation process take place. As you can see in the following diagram, the different steps in the elongation process. A tRNA amino acid approaches the ribosomes and binds at the A site. In the second step, two tRNAs can be at a ribosome at one time. The anticodons are paired to the codons. The peptide bond formation attaches the peptide chain to the newly arrived amino acid and the ribosome moves forward. The empty tRNA exits from the site. The next amino acid tRNA complex is approaching the ribosome. So, you can see here that during the elongation process, how the amino acids enter the A site, get transferred to the P site. There is a bond peptide bond formation get translocated to the A site and again the A site gets emptied to welcome the other amino acid. The following picture shows the detailed information about how the peptide bond is formed between the two amino acid. The first amino acid is the methionine which links to the second amino acid with the help of a peptide bond. Now, in the step 5, that is the last step, that is the termination. The termination process takes place by stop codons. These stop codons are UAG, UAA and UGA. The termination process takes place with the help of release factors. As you can see that during the termination, the polypeptide is released. 
The amino acids or the tRNA is also released two subunit, the small subunit and the large subunit of the ribosome dissociates. And this takes place with the help of the energy utilized by GTP. So, the ribosomes it move from 5 prime to 3 prime on messenger RNA. The diagram clearly shows the large subunit and the small subunit and how the ribosomes move along the mRNA and the polypeptide chain is being released. Now, the next topic that we are going to deal with is the regulation of gene expression, how the gene is expressed. Under this topic, we will study about the meaning of gene expression, the mechanism of gene expression and an example of gene expression that is lac operon. Thank you.